My name is Dr. Hallie Cheeseman, and I recently joined Arbury as a Programme Director. I have worked in the Barry business for 35 years, and in my new role have started exploring opportunities in Barry's that Arbury may wish to fund. I've currently identified two areas of interest, and in this web webinar, I'm framing the problem for one of them, advanced, fast charging, lithium metal batteries. The second area of interest will be posted in seven to 10 days time, so be on the lookout for that one as well. If you want to engage with us to work on solutions to this challenge, we invite you to connect with us accordingly. My contact details will be available at the end of this webinar. Alternatively, you can fill out one of the teaming partner forms that are available on this website. Please note, this is not a request for a proposal or an FOA or a BAA. I want to thank you for your interest, for listening and for your attention. Thank you. Here is the summary of what we are going to cover. Arpuri's mission is to work on the challenging problems. We're not seeking to do the easy, but the hard. An example of a challenging problem is getting the world to switch to electric vehicles. One of the innovations being pursued is lithium metal batteries with the promise of longer range than today's lithium iron. Finally, central to this webinar is the additional priority of making sure we can achieve fast charging for these lithium metal batteries. This is a well-known chart that talks about the energy usage in the US. Transportation and electricity generation, as you would expect, are big users. As we look towards transportation electrification, we are moving energy production from one to the other, but in the process, we will use less energy and produce less carbon dioxide. For example, if we were to electrify 50% of our vehicles, we would reduce overall energy consumption by about 6% and carbon dioxide emissions by 12%. ARPARE has two goals. Firstly, to work to reduce imports, improve efficiency and reduce emissions. And secondly, to set up the US for technological leadership. In the critical area of batteries and fuel cells, the execution of this mission has resulted in the funding of over 100 projects and an investment of your money, the taxpayer, of over $250 million. Now, what is it going to take to move us to more electric vehicles? We, us human beings, are of course the biggest obstacle. What with our likes, dislikes, fears and worries, let alone our addiction to convenience. Range anxiety is a thing. Many of us for sure cannot imagine anything worse than breaking down in the middle of nowhere. Eliminating range anxiety is critical to driving EV adoption. And while we hope and expect that investment in infrastructure and government policy will play its part, there is no doubt that technical innovation will be a major enabler. Making batteries that run longer at the right cost receives lots of attention, as indeed it should. But fast charge time is also an essential prerequisite to an EV society. I want to quickly run a scenario for you that illustrates that we must start treating charge time as just as important as energy density, cycle life or cost. I stress this is an illustration to make a point. You will also note the asterisk on the top title, and we will come back to that later. These two cars are identical in every way except for the battery. The red car has half the battery, so it was a lot cheaper than the blue car. The red car battery can also be charged twice as fast on a per kilowatt hour basis, and so achieves a full charge in as little as 15 minutes compared with the blue car that takes a full hour. For everyday driving, these cars behave exactly the same. Going to work, running errands, visiting friends in the community. But for the same experience, the red car owner paid $10,000 less for their car. Of course, the difference comes when we have to go on a long journey. So let's take a close look at that. To make this more interesting, you can have the blue car and I would take the red car. We are going to drive from where I live now in Orlando, Florida, to where I expect to move at some point, Washington, DC. This route is mostly I-95, and there are many, many charging stations, so we don't have to worry about being able to find one. The journey is 860 miles. 
We will assume five minute ramp off and five minutes ramp on time. We both set off at 6 a.m. in the morning and drive at the same average speed of 70 miles an hour. At 9 a.m., three hours into the drive, I have had to stop once and you are 29 miles ahead. Checking in again at 3 p.m. in the afternoon, I have had to stop three times and you only once, but now you are only six miles ahead. So who gets to DC first? Well, of course I do because I design this exercise. I arrive at 8.22 p.m. and you still have another 17 miles to go. You had to stop for a total of two hours and 20 minutes, whereas I only had to stop for two hours and five minutes. I had five well-spaced stops for a quick 15 minute charge, a fresh cup of coffee, and of course, a visit to the restroom. You had two one hour stops, two one hour stops at service stations. Now just think about that. So of course, this is a designed example to make a point, but I think you get it. Charge time arguably is as important as range and potentially has a huge cost advantage. Now it is accepted that the road to longer running or higher energy density batteries is a progression from lithium ion chemistry to safe and high energy lithium metal batteries. However, the problem of lithium dendrites must be solved to get us to a successful product. This slide represents an analysis that coincided with the ARPA-E Ionics program that was initiated to find solutions to the lithium metal dendrite problem. The chart interprets required product attributes into four different technology parameters. Cumulative capacity, AKA cycle life before shorting occurs. Plating current density, AKA charge speed. The amount of lithium required represented by the color scheme. And finally, the aerial capacity, an indicator of the energy density as represented by the size of the circles. The smaller green circle represents the objectives of the Ionix program, and this target corresponds with the following cell objectives. Now, some of the Ionix teams are reaching this goal, a tremendous achievement. Now, charging time was not specifically called out in the FOA objectives, but plating current density was. At three milliamps per centimeter squared for the small green circle, we have a charge time of approximately three hours. While there can be no doubt that the cell objectives listed represent a very attractive product for many applications, a three hour charge time will never be sufficient for automotive applications. Fortunately, the need for a second phase was predicated in this work, and in the top right hand corner, you see a large green circle that represents a cell that would have more than 500 watt hours per kilogram, a cycle life of a thousand cycles, and a charge time of 2C or 30 minutes. In fact, the subtitle of this webinar could easily be to the large green circle and beyond. But this is not easy. It will be hard. It will be difficult to achieve in a postage stamp cell or coin cell, let alone a large automotive multi-layered product. Scale up is a challenge, and we're going to have to rethink all of the intrinsic and extrinsic variables that are at play, particularly at the electrode interface. This chart with credit to Professor Mukherjee at the University of Purdue summarizes the challenges and asks the right questions. His analysis applies equally to any battery that has a solid state interface with lithium metal. Please feel free to reach out to him to understand his thinking further. For me though, these are the three salient conclusions. Interfacial stability of the metal anode during stripping plays a pivotal role in the morphological evolution and electrochemical performance during subsequent plating operations. Moreover, Deconvolving the plating stripping crosstalk is necessary to achieve fast charge targets and long-term cycling stability. Postage stamp cells are like walking a beam two feet from the ground. Real cells are like walking the high wire across Niagara Falls. In addition to optimal cell polarizations, small variations across electrode interfaces in stresses and strains, temperatures, diffusion rates, or concentration gradients need to be factored in 
in order to deliver a safe and fast charging product. So in conclusion, to the large green circle and beyond, we love the opportunity of lithium metal EV batteries, and we have made lots of progress. For products to be successful, however, we have to make sure that we have fast charging, and therefore we need technologies that will deliver this along with everything else. 30 minute charging would be as per lithium ion in the new Audi e-tron. 15 minutes is as per the example presented in this webinar. And for the red car at least, a walk in the park for a 350 kilowatt ultra fast charger. If the battery can take it. Is faster than 15 minutes possible? You will notice on the objectives that the asterisk has reappeared. Not only is this consistent with the second green circle, but if you were to want to enjoy the cost benefit of a battery half the size, the cycle life must be 2x, not to compromise the total number of miles the battery is going to have to deliver in its lifetime. The gauntlet is thrown down. We do these things not because they are easy. We know they are hard. We do them because we must. Thank you for listening. Here is the contact information. If you can help us on this journey, we want to hear from you.